Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryan and everyone watching us live Hello. on Twitch at this holiday time. Sneak it in, we had a couple people. Yeah. We're even in a production truck in San Antonio, Texas right now, being watched. Yes, in the cold. <laughs> I don't think, I don't know, I'm sure um, San Antonio is probably reasonably warm, isn't it? It, no, normally, but I think right now it's kind of chilly. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, we got a big show for you this afternoon. Even though it's the holiday season, a bunch of stuff is going on. But right at the top, I want to tell everyone scheduling stuff because, hey, we're at like mission critical time for the holidays. <laughs> Next week, we're not going to be doing weekly daily Wednesdays. Jill's got to go get presents from like four different families. Yeah. She wasn't yes. happy with just getting presents from one, not two, <laughs> not three. Yeah. She's like, I need to go to four different families and get presents or I'm not going to be pleased. Oh, I like right. giving presents more than receiving. <laughs> Does anybody ever buy that? They're yeah. like, yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> um, so instead of just leaving everybody hanging now, this is, this is like, this is why I don't really want to put a time and date on it should be this time next week probably roughly around the same time maybe a little bit earlier i'll have all the parts in to build the steam rectangle so we'll be doing a live linux pc gaming mm -hmm. build <laughs> on stream what could go wrong nothing yeah <laughs> it'll be perfect <laughs> not necessarily uh worried about that i did get a chance i did get a chance uh day before yesterday thursday well, not thursday uh tuesday monday monday so I guess it was like Sunday morning or whatever, evening, whatever. Time's weird, man, uh, with my mm -hmm. schedule. <laughs> anyway, I knew I was going to have like two hours of scheduled, no internet time because, you know, uh, business called me up and they're like, yo, we're going to be down for two hours due to maintenance. I'm like, fine, I'll come in here and I'm going to test uh, getting everything set up for a PC stream to do that build stream. And then I found out that none of my Wi-Fi lighting works without online connectivity. Yeah, that's just... <laughs> that's when things are a little bit too smart sometimes <laughs> dude i was like <laughs> i was mad yeah i bet <laughs> because i couldn't set the f-stop aperture or anything on any of the cameras i was like let's just get this thing lit up like we normally would have it for the stream and so i yeah. guesstimated some things it should be okay and just to make things a little extra squirrely Due to the holidays, Pedro's got to attend an event, and instead of just me and Jordan doing a show, we're going to mm -hmm. push Linux Gamecast weekly recording till Monday. Yeah, cool. So <laughs> Linux Gamecast weekly will record on the 26th. I have no idea what time, because <laughs> we're professionals. I will post that on Discord mm -hmm. and probably on uh, Patreon once we get the time nailed down. Probably going to be earlier, though. It depends, because uh, I don't know if Jordan's going to work or not. Yeah. And if Jordan doesn't have to work, I mean, we might start doing it at like 4 p.m. or something like that. So that should be kind of fun. And uh, yeah, that's about it, Jill Bryant. Keep your fingers mm -hmm. crossed. Hopefully all the parts come in, and uh, we'll yeah. be doing that next week. And uh, everyone on the internet can tell me I'm doing it wrong. But it'll be fun. You'll get to watch one of these boxes get set up. You'll probably get to watch me compile a real-time kernel. And a bunch of other random weirdo things that I like to do. How about you? <laughs> oh, boy. So I had a great time with my family at Disneyland uh, last Sunday afternoon um, for the holidays. And that was nice to spend time with my Steve husband and my brother and his girlfriend. But we, ha we had a great time. That was the first time the four of us were together at Disneyland with our, our annual passes. So that was, that was really cool. <laughs> we're going to make it a... A frequent happening. <laughs> and today I actually I am actually wearing a rare LGC holiday shirt from several years back. It says Hail Santa, not H E L L, but H A I L <laughs> Santa <laughs> with a Santa hat on a green long sleeve shirt. <laughs> and here it is. <laughs> That's a classic. That's from like two or three years ago. Yeah, it and, sure uh, is. I put those up. <laughs> Just for that, I think I put them up in like the end of November and I ran them to December. Like, we're only going to do this once and I might do a, like a revised version, but that's never going to come back. That's interesting to see. I saw Joe on that. I'm like, ah, yeah. I got one. Mine's black though. 
Yeah. As yeah, you would right. never imagine. <laughs> so, uh, cool times, <laughs> interesting times, and everything after the holidays are over. Uh, we'll be back on regular schedules yeah. and all that fun stuff. But, you know, it's better than doing nothing because I always want to do something, even if it is like showing up like, hey, we're going to play, I don't know, Minecraft, because mm-hmm. everyone just poof. And I don't know about you guys, but most of my entertainment and, you know, background noise and stuff like that is coming from Twitch, YouTube and stuff like that and live streams and everyone disappears. And I'm like, well, there's nothing for me to watch. Oh, I'll make something for other people to watch. All right. Yeah. You remember, Ben, several years ago, uh, Christmas morning fell on Wednesday on, and we did LWW and I had my moose antlers on and <laughs> no, my reindeer antlers on. <laughs> you were talking to somebody who has zero idea what day Christmas is. Yeah, I know. I know but, it's at the end of the month. <laughs> it did fall on the 25th, December 25th that year. I believe it was 2018 of LGC or 2019, maybe. Well, let's pretend it was 18 because we could put a four point in front of it and talk about our first story of the night. Um, yeah. XFC 418 is out. There's a ton of new features. Uh, there's a quick little write up at um, Ubuntu. And you can go through that, you know, a couple of the big features, but, you know, you really want to head over to xfc.org and take the entire tour because this has been in work for like two years, two years, yeah, and it's ready yeah. for production. <laughs> and you really got to go through all this stuff and you got to squint a little bit because XFC updates, man, they can be hard to spot since XFC updates, uh, that team designs for functionality. They don't design for the sake of design like some other desktop managers, but the big OMG <laughs> yeah. thing for 418. <laughs> I got to say, it's probably Thunar. Mm -hmm. A couple of neat things you can do in that. You can now enable like image previews in the sidebar, which was kind of neat. I played around with that earlier today. And, uh, you know, why would you want that? Because, well, I mean, if you get a directory full of thumbnails, you have to like control zoom in to kind of find the ones that you want. This will just give you everything over there in the bottom left hand corner, which is neat. But. There's a newly editable toolbar and that allow you to like reorder toolbar icons, anything that you want to do in Thunar like that, which was also neat. 418 also has recursive search in Thunar, which like, okay, that's extremely dope. Yes. And it's possible to undo basic file operations and redo them. Now, how much would you, I know some people are like, Ooh, it's so exciting. Other people are like, that's not boring. The screen needs to jiggle then. And, uh, you need to change the complete. UI. And that's not how XFCE rolls kids. <laughs> um, another thing that made me extraordinarily happy, bit late for me, but setting default applications no longer takes 11 D steps in XFCE. Oh, the future yeah. is here, kids. I ran into that because in a couple of weeks ago, uh, Chromium, I have Chromium installed. It decided that it's going to take over and be the default application for anything with an image. JPEGs, pings, and all. It was opening, opening Chromium. It took that away from GIMP. I'm like, that's a bad Chromium. So I had to do it the old way, which was very convoluted, but I got everything set back up. Now it's right there in settings. Easy to do. A couple updates for the compositor. Adaptive VSync with GLX. And here's good news, everyone. If you're using Debian testing, Bookworm, Sid, Install it. It's there. I did it last night. Well, I did it this morning. Posted a picture of it. And um, like most XFCE updates, I'm happy to say I didn't notice anything different. I'm like, all right. Stable as always. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, one of my favorite updates is actually simple, but solves a very annoying problem. You can now change the font size uh, and style in the XFCE clock applet. Woohoo, it's about time. (laughs) And there are now four clock layouts date only, time only, date and time. I only see three clock layouts. Oh, (laughs) well, I I guess their review was incorrect, Ben. (laughs) No, I just think you're a Kardashian. Ah, okay. (laughs) There there are uh, (laughs) four font styles. Uh, uh, four uh, clock layouts, not three. <laughs> so <laughs> instead of uh, four lights, not three. Oh, anyways, moving on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the XFCE four panel length is is now configurable in pixels rather than percentages as before. 
And there is a new keep panel above windows option. Um, and this allows maximized app windows to fill the area behind the panel rather than maximize its bottom or top edge to sit flush against it. And that's a really nice feature to have. And like Ven was saying, Thunar has a new, ha has a new uh, bookmark menu in the sidebar and it has a new split view option for easily dragging and dropping. So lots of cool stuff for Thunar as well. <laughs> yeah, I went poking around even before the show. I'm like, there's got to be something. Um, it was all the same, which was beautiful. That's, that's yeah. what we love about XFC, and it works. It's stable. I haven't had any crashes. And um, yeah, if you're looking for you know a power user's productivity desktop manager, that you know, it's a window, a very heavy window manager. But uh, it, I've always had that toss up. You know, I started with CDE way back in the day on um, Solaris. And I mm -hmm. use CDE on Linux. I was one of those people. And, you yeah. know, XFC came out and I started using that. And I've always wanted to use Enlightenment, but Enlightenment is about as stable as a rabbit emu on a methamphetamine binge. It crashes <laughs> all the time. Um, yeah. I like the idea of it. I think it's aesthetically, like, weirdly pleasing in that 90s aesthetic. But I always <laughs> end up on XFCE. Yeah. But it's going to be interesting to follow uh, Jordan, uh, one of my co-hosts. On Linux Teamcast Weekly, he recently moved from XFCE to GNOME out of curiosity. He's like, I want to give it a try. I want to see how it works out. Mm. <laughs> we'll see how long that will last. All right. Good news, everybody. Um, the thing Jill never got. Yes, correct. Yeah, so the fine fo folks at Pine64 working on a new open source tablet estimated to be available after the Chinese New Year and priced extremely affordable like their other Pine 64 hardware. So the Pine Tab 2 is going to be a much more powerful than the original Pine Tab, which yes, I had ordered and never got <laughs> because it suffered from hardware shortages from the pandemic, among other reasons. And But there's some really awesome uh, uh, specs, but the Pine, Time, Pine Tab 2 is still experimental and these specs may change. But I think a lot of them will probably be, uh, remain the same. So, so far, it features the RK3566. Okay, you guys is... are like watching this video. Too. Uh, you, <laughs> all right, Pine, it's... Pine, you, you got to work on this editing here because you probably got like an 11 uh, minute video and six of it is a slow zoom on this thing. Come yeah, on. it's slow. <laughs> no, I, I see that, Ben. <laughs> trying to show it off, I'm trying to help you out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, it features the RK3566. 3566, which is a modern mid-range quad-core Cortex A55 processor that it, it actually integrates a Mali G52 MP2 GPU, and it supports up to 8 gigabytes of RAM. It has a tempered glass 10.1 IPS screen with modern and reasonably thin bezels, but we don't know the resolutions yet. I'm hoping more than 720p, like the original Pine Tab. And it's got a micro HDMI port for video output, a front facing two megapixel camera and a rear facing five megapixel one that's kind of standard for, for tablets. But what's really it differentiates this one is the new Pine Tab 2 has a metal chassis that is very sturdy while also being easy to disassemble for upgrades, maintenance, and repair. And to make the device end user serviceable, Pine64 has made the Pine Tab 2's gets modular, like, like the Pinebook Pro and the Pine Phone. That's what they say. They're like, hey, if you're yeah. used to taking apart a Pinebook <laughs> Pro, this is going to be equally uh, equal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's going to be uh, yeah, easy to navigate, just, just like the other, their other hardware. And so this includes, uh, the modularity includes the daughter board, the battery, and USB keyboard connector. And they could all be replaced in under five minutes. And like the original Pine Tab, the Pine Tab 2 will have a keyboard, which doubles up as a protective carry cover. And this will be nice because the Pine Tab 1 did not have this included by default, but the Pine Tab 2 will. Yay! And something I am looking really forward to, and one of the reasons I want the Pine Tab 2, and I wanted the original Pine Tab, was if there is a Linux OS that is 
both convergent and mobile and goes to desktop mode when you open up the keyboard case. This could be a game changer and it would sure be nice to do show notes on. It, it, it would just be really nice to have that convergency with the, you know, using the tablet as a mobile OS or if you have the keyboard as a desktop OS. And so I'm that, hoping that comes to fruition. It's <laughs> kind of like a uh, Android tablet with a bunch of extra steps. Yeah, <laughs> but better because it's pure Linux. <laughs> yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. We might have a version of Manjaro or Debian that's convergent. That would oh, be really man. cool. I can't wait to try to use a desktop <laughs> UI on a 10 inch screen without a yeah. stylus. Yeah. Oh, oh, there is that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all I got to do is converge my mouse into this USB <laughs> port so I can. <laughs> uh, they do say developer units, they're going to be available soon. Four and eight gig options, to which I say that's kind of skimpy. That just is. That is because we're seeing the rock chips and stuff like that come out with eight, yep. 16, and 16 32 and gigs. 32, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, unless we're going to get like a hyper trimmed down desktop version of Linux, man, like eight gigs is, trust me, that's pushing it because these two boxes back here mm -hmm. are eight gigs and they're running a web browser and they're about full. I'm just, I'm just saying that from experience. Yeah. Yeah. No mention of the screen resolution. Yeah. Worried about that. Um, the mm -hmm. developer units, I already said they're going to be out. Prototypes will be available at Fostum this upcoming mm -hmm. year. So I'm curious to see some actual hands on reports from that. And they do mention, you know, as Jill was saying, Jill ordered a blind tab, never showed up, and, you know, refunded and all that. Uh, the original Pine tab, I wasn't interested in because I had a 720p screen, which mm -hmm. that's not usable in a tablet modern tablet like even you know five years ago that wouldn't have been acceptable hopefully this is going to have like you know 2k retina style something like that but they said yeah. you know the original death of that was in some part they wanted to allocate resources to the pine phone's availability through 2020 and 2021 so that was kind of part of it was like well we really didn't have resources to push those out and i'm sure it wasn't a big ticket item right and a lot of people yeah true they don't want to live the right future, which is the DS9 future, is where you have a tablet for everything, like a normal yeah. person. <laughs> oh, that was a smart decision on Pine 64's, you know, part to to prioritize, you know, where what the mo most popular hardware is and what people wanted at the time. Uh, I'm cautiously optimistic. Yes, we'll, me too. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what the price point is with this, because that. That's a fine line they got to dance, you know, then Pine yeah, Hardware's absolutely. always been right on that line of like very affordable, but also almost usable. <laughs> so um, I do want to give this a mention, though. That, Ooh, ladies and gentlemen, is an pencil. RGB soldering iron. <laughs> you know, just in case you have your soldering iron plugged in and on and you can't find it from the smoke. Uh, yeah, you could have that. There's a couple other things. All, the, all this is going to be uh, linked in the show notes. Mm -hmm. Fun stuff. 2023 is going to be interesting over at Pine. Yay! Now, I'm going to try to tell you something that doesn't seem very exciting. is absolutely very exciting. It's going to be the next best thing ever. And what am I talking about? WebRTC. It's what we're using right now. Me and Jill are talking. I'm like, mm -hmm. when, I, when I'm like, hey, Jill, how's it going? We're using the power <laughs> of WebRTC. So Jill will be like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> ultra low latency and Jill's on the other side of the country, you know, I, and it works. It works on Saturday. We know Pedro and, you know, we have Canada, UK, yeah, North America, like super low latency communications and all that. How do I do that? I got a hacked up Jitsi server where I've, <laughs> I've modified the deal and I've changed some of the audio, the way the video and audio works. And, um, so it's more applicable to doing podcasts. But most people don't want to mess around with that. You know, it's like step one. You'll see uh, it's pretty obvious when people are using like Discord, like OBS Ninja, stuff like that. Because yeah. you're just going to take that hit because, you know, it's not, it's more like general purpose, right? You know, it's good enough, but it's not great. What if we could build that into OBS though? Oh, that's a dream. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> and that is going to happen. It's Yay! getting started. Uh, WebRTC output support. This is, this is the first step. This is a baby step. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't celebrate quite yet. You know, might not look my might not look like much, but this is gonna be big for streamers in the future. And especially for people that don't want to set up their own their own WebRTC instances, be it Chitsy or whatnot. 
this is going to allow like WebRTC OBS users, you be able to share your video out directly. Like say, I don't have a like good shot example. Say I had um, like this shot. What am I doing right now? See, Jill can see me and Jill can see her. Mm -hmm. Jill, you're seeing what I'm seeing is what's going out on the stream. Yeah, including the lower thirds and, and everything. Yeah, everything's there. <laughs> and the way I do that is because I have a Blackmagic Intensity Pro, which is a piece of hardware that captures, I mean, it's tied into OBS and it generates those frames, sends it out to the PC that Jill's on. So she can see in real time everything that I'm seeing. This would be another way of doing Now, another way of doing that would be with NDI. If we wanted to set up OBS mm -hmm. on this machine and just with WebRTC, I could just take that scene and I could put an output to it and say, hey, send this to Jill. Yeah. And we could be done with it. And Jill could take a scene that she wanted and say, hey, send this back to Vin. And it's going to work over peer to peer. We don't need server it's infrastructure. Amazing. We don't need anything crazy set up to do that. And we're talking like sub second latency too, because that's one of the advantages of WebRTC over things like um, your uh, R uh, RTMP connections mm. with Twitch and places like that. And I'm sure Twitch and YouTube are going to be switching over. WebRTC, then you can get the other flexibility. Like what I'm able to do with um, Jitsi is force Jitsi to use VP9. But with WebRTC, you're also going to be able to use uh, H.265 and AV1 because, yeah. again, we're just talking back and forth to each other. We're not going through a service or anything. We yeah, get a, you're not going to get away it. with murders. Or, you know, why, why? Yeah. Uh, we don't have to pay them royalty dollar bills. And um, for the back end collaboration stuff that this is going to enable in the future, Oh, it's going to be neat. Um, it's in heavy development right now. I made the mistake of like subscribing to this topic. And I mean, it's just people <laughs> blowing up working on it. But maybe you're like, I, I don't care. You know, you don't want to set up like a back and forth communication thing like we get going on. I know. Here's another thing you'll be able to do. Stream to multiple services. Mm -hmm. Wow. So this would, uh, stream Game changer. To, yeah, Facebook. <laughs> OB, uh, not OBS, but uh, Twitch. Uh, YouTube. TikTok, all at the same time. Twitter, you'd, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'd be able to do it with this. No problem whatsoever. Um, so keep, your eye, keep an eye on that. I'm definitely going to be talking about this later on. Also, it's using Rust because things got to use Rust now, right? Yeah. And that's even, even better, you know, actually, since the Linux kernel is going to have a lot of rusty elements to it, it should make it that much uh, speedier. It is. And I, Joe's yeah. asking about NDI and I'm like, oh yeah, you go look on the new tech blog where they like, Hey, Vin Stowe wrote a thing. Uh, yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm familiar with <laughs> NDI. We know each other. Um, NDI is a good solution, but again, it's closed source. It's proprietary. It required also NDI in your network is cancerous because NDI's life mm -hmm. finds a way, man. Like I had to fight NDI and like block off ports and different machines to get that to work. This is going to be more straightforward. Now, what I'm curious about is how the audio is going to be handled. Mm, yeah. That, that's when I'm going to start chiming in. Right now, I'm just sitting back, Jill, and I'm, I'm watching from my ivory tower. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. When they start talking about how they're going to implement audio, then I'm going to show up. I'm like, konnichiwa, people. Um, yeah. yeah. Is, it, is it going to be, you know, are, are they, is it going to default to Opus? Is it going to be have the ability to do uncompressed <laughs> that would be awesome well it's going to fall within real time <laughs> web rtc standard so it's going to be opus yeah probably but be, yeah. um that's just like a built-in thing with a web rtc you're kind but of being able to adjust it like you do in jitsi that'll be nice that uh it'll be interesting to see how they do it because there, there, there's so many interesting things that this can enable and i love the flexibility like the ease of use of stuff like this you know even if you're just getting a group of people together with your friends, you're no yeah. longer going to be reliant on Discord or Jitsi or anything like that. You can just pull it up between yourselves. I know. That is so awesome. And what's also really neat is WebRTC OBS is being tested on Linux and Mac with locally run broadcast box as well as remotely hosted WIP endpoints. So it's being tested on the Linuxes. Woohoo! <laughs> and, uh, this is something that I found really cool on uh, the GitHub uh, page description is OBS could experiment with broadcasting multiple scenes at once mm -hmm. and viewers can then switch between scenes or different views in the same game. Yep. Woo, Ben, that's going to make your, your life so much fun. Like weird <laughs> stuff. I mean, things yeah. that, you, that, that would be possible, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's so, so cool. Um, okay, to make this point, uh, yeah, this has been tested on Mac OS X, and of course, Debbie and Sid. What about Windows? Who cares? Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is a WebRTC after all. It's multi-platform. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mean Windows would find a way to mess it up. I mean, yeah, this is true. <laughs> Wind Ma- blows is going to blow. Microsoft's got 30 years experience <laughs> making things hard for no apparent reason. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh. So true, Ben. And I'm also excited about this because it, it, it has, you know, some of the features that Video Ninja uses for OBS that I use every week for the other podcasts I do on Destination Linux. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be really nice to have this completely integrated with even a lot more features. <laughs> It it's will awesome. to be able to get something like closer to what I've stuck together in here w- in the hands of like, hey, you don't need to do all this stuff in order to ha- be able to have this type of experience, you know? Yeah. Which is going to be awesome for everybody. That makes me happy. That makes me excited. But do you know what else makes me excited? What then? When people support us on Patreon, point to patreon.com forward slash Linux Game Cast. <laughs> Come be one of the fiscally irresponsible, lovely people. That support what we do. Crazy business model. We put pretty much everything out there for free. If you like it, hey man, kick us a couple of bucks a week, month, you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars a month. No problem. We love you. Um any, you know, four quarters a week. It's the access to a bunch of extra stuff. We have access to our Discord, live and uncut versions of the show. Sneak peeks. That's some things I'm working on. <laughs> One thing I'm slowly piecing together because I like to put things together correctly. It's not a huge market, but you know, I like to teach people how to use Linux correctly, you know, not just like we got to do it this way, but like, hey, you want to do some production stuff, you want to do some video stuff. I want to give the tools and make those available for the next person who wants to say, hey, I'm going to make my version of a Linux gamecast, or I'm going to make my version of a destination Linux, you know, they, yeah. however they want to get out there and they want to start doing audio production, video production, YouTube, become that full stack content creator. I want to make it very clear to them and I want to get rid of any doubts that it is doable on Linux and not just that. Just saying I can do it's one thing. Showing you how to do it. That's yeah, what I'm here for. Awesome. That's what I show up. And mm-hmm. I'm going to be showing everybody how to make a podcast correctly mm-hmm. in a DAW and to quit using Audacity. Why? Because I'm tired of listening to bad podcasts. <laughs> yeah. And what I mean by that is I like the people on the shows. I like what they're talking about. It just sounds horrible. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people too proud to ask. So what I'm going to do, we're going to do this class style. We're going to do it. Hey, let's sit down. Let me explain to you how we're going to do this. We're going to stack things up and you're going to be able to get all the files at home and play along with the video. It's something every single awesome. person can do and it won't cost you a penny. Well, I mean, outside of, you know, your monthly tithes from. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Make sure to. To give us a Christmas gift. <laughs> Make it rain. Speaking of Christmas yeah. gifts, uh, Twitch subs, you get access to our Discord and a bunch of other stuff as well. We do want to thank you for that. Uh, Dubsy, thanks for the resub. Katana, thanks for the resub. And um, I think we got your patron. Le- Who was our Johnny? It was, yeah, it was Johnny last week, our yeah. latest patron. Now, uh, we do have a couple of different things. Uh, if you want to, Pick us up like a little trinket, like Joe did. Speaking of that, I got Joe back here on the board now. Why? Yes. Why have I written <laughs> DSN Joe back? That lovely ram. <laughs> That's our wall of fine upstanding animals. If you pick up anything in the studio that we're going to be using, uh, that's, that's where you end up. We got a little Amazon wish list that's filled with, you know, exciting things like <laughs> fun size epic motherboards. You look at it. It's so wow. tiny. Uh, audio stuff. Power strips. Ooh. <laughs> Stay away. I don't need a 3D printer. Uh, $500 keyboard. Ooh. Ooh, for your editing, Ben. <laughs> I will straight up. Don't, yeah. No one buy that because I won't talk to you for like a month if you don't. Like, no. <laughs> um, Jill has one yeah. as well filled with. Uh, Rainbow plushy penguins and light up penguins. And penguin penguins <laughs> and cups with penguins. Yeah, cups and a keyboard holder for. I've got one actually behind me that I'm showing off some keyboards. Uh, those come in handy. Those are really good for showing off. I have s- over a hundred <laughs> keyboards in my collection. This is Jill's magic number. If it's more yeah. than five, it goes from one, two, three, four, five hundred. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so all my vintage com computers, you know, I have keyboards for all my vintage computers and I have several hundred of those. Many hundreds. Yeah, um, <laughs> did you see the keyboard I posted earlier in uh, Discord? No, earlier today? That as a no. Uh, no, no. Uh, in 2018 at 3 p.m. on a Friday. Oh, no, I, no, I don't remember. No, the one I today, Joe. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I guess I missed it. <laughs> it has a... Have you got the link to that? Let me... I, I want to show that off real quick. <laughs> this is... You know what? It probably clicks and make noise, so I'm not going to like it. But I want to show mm. everybody this. Um, why? Because it's got a GPU on it, and it can run Unreal Engine 5. Oh, cool. It's like a regular ordinary keyboard, except uh, it's oh, got I see. an entire display oh. built into the background, and it's individual. Oh, nice. Like you want to watch a rocket take off while you're typing. Um, That's beautiful. Actually, I have, those are the uh, translucent uh, uh, keycaps, and I have a keyboard in, in uh, um, I'm going to order, actually, from a company that makes those. I've always wanted one. <laughs> well, it's not um, the keycaps. It's the video engine sitting behind That's this, underneath. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, Just man. Just a screen, a monitor underneath it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> How much do you think that costs? Well, just the keyboards themselves for the clear keyboards, it's about 200 to $250. Mm -hmm. So, with the video screen, uh, 500 <laughs> 400 you're gonna hate this. Hate this, Steve. It's only about three fifty. Oh, okay. Oh, that's 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 going on my list. I can't <laughs> believe I missed that one bit in our Discord. It's like, huh? <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. Um, it, it can definitely do the RGBs. You can play your anim animo stuff on it, and uh, I don't know if it makes the clicks and clacks. I know that might be a deal breaker, but hey, you could always get a speaker and just like set it next to it, and where it just made noise, make you yeah. feel better. Well, I know the company Wormer makes those translucent keyboards, and they have, have ones that are reds or browns or mm -hmm. blues. So. See, like, I'm not going to spend, <laughs> like, okay, see, oh, I'd hate myself to spend, five, if I'm spending $500 on a keyboard, it's got to be, like, a specialized weird keyboard thing. But, like, yeah. I'm just on something with a video screen, like, $300, I'd buy that for somebody else. I wouldn't buy that for myself. But yeah. then again. <laughs> I see. When it comes to, like this thing CNC, we're not doing a commercial for it. I even told you what it is. You got to go back and watch the video. Actually, you need to be in our Discord to find a link to it. Um, here's the thing: I subscribe to like our mechanical keyboards. The subreddit, like three hundred dollars for a keyboard, they don't even blink at that, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I honestly have paid that myself <laughs> for some of my very special keyboards, and, uh, including one of the smallest ever made. It, it's yeah it's it's an, an egregious waste of money that people take pride in <laughs> yeah yeah they're like oh look here i bought this uh, keyboard they have like specialized keyboard cables yeah. that do nothing other than they're just keyboard cables they're like yeah they're yeah, like the, 75 dollars and they go the curly anything? aviator ones yes i love those i've got rainbow ones and pink ones do they do anything no, what, it no they the just keyboard. look pretty then. yeah see like i don't i don't hate on that but don't don't try to make me understand it <laughs> <laughs> um no that was i just wanted to bring that up a little bit of a side track That's cool but we do thank you for your support um linuxteamcast.com we got everything listed under the support if you send it anything from our wish list we'll read it off so make sure you're creative about it and uh yeah that's mm -hmm. gonna be that jill <laughs> we got a little bit of bad news before we get out of here though yeah so yeah, this is this is sad news, and yeah, it's bad too, Vin. <laughs> so we shouldn't expect a Raspberry Pi five in 2023. Me and Vin were hoping and speculating uh, this this last uh, few months that we might get a Raspberry Pi five in 2023, but alas, no. So the Raspberry Pi CEO Eben Upton has confirmed that users you know, shouldn't expect a new entry in the company's flagship product series for at least another year. Upton, he also said that 2023 is very much a recovery year from the effects um, that COVID-19 pandemic, you know, has had on global manufacturing and supply chains. And he also states, you know what 
would really be a disaster if we tried to introduce some sort of Raspberry Pi 5 product and couldn't ramp production properly because of constraint. I don't know. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm a corporation. Can I get a Raspberry Pi? Oh, I can? Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yeah, we talked about this last week regarding the Raspberry Pi shortage. You know, the Raspberry Pi Foundation expects supply to recover to pre-pandemic levels in the second quarter of 2023 and to be unlimited in the second half of the year. So hopefully then they'll, we'll, they'll start thinking about putting a new Raspberry Pi 5 out. <laughs> um, I, you know... I think I speak for a lot of us is I'm not going to be waiting for a Raspberry Pi 5 in 2023. There's yeah. too many, too many, an embarrassment of options right now, especially based yeah. on the rock chip, uh, you know, with 816 and 32 gig options uh, that if I needed, you know, something to learn on, something to play with an SBC system, that's where I'm going. I'm not waiting for 2023. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, as we've been talking about, like for the, <laughs> we've been doing like the 12 days of Christmas, but with the Raspberry yeah. Pi is uh, <laughs> like, here's yet another thing that's more powerful and cheaper than a Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi 4 is obsolete technology now. So we're definitely not waiting on a restock at that. And yeah. Uh, like, yeah, it'd be towards the end of 2023. Who knows? Who knows? This could all just be like, haha, I was messing with Vin, messing with Jill. We're really yeah, going to release true. them next year. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, Things I'm change not. quickly. You know, they said one thing in November, even Upton did. Yeah. He said another thing last week. So, you know, now we I, have something new. And <laughs> I think it is like they don't know. Yeah. They don't know. And um, again, again, I checked uh, before we went live this week. I mean, it, to even get a hold to an 8 gig Raspberry Pi 4, you get a bite from a kid from somebody who's scalping it for 200 plus dollars. <laughs> yeah. I could buy so much more cooler single board computers for $200 than that. Orange pies with 16 gigs or 32 yeah. gigs. Yeah. <laughs> so that's unfortunate. No pies in your Christmas stockings unless you got pie. If you have somebody bought you a raspberry pie for Christmas, Ben, you better be nice to them because they yeah, spent some chatter exactly. on you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. Last show of 2020. Oh, wow. <laughs> two, I think, yeah. Yeah. LWDW. <laughs> We're going to roll some credits, but they're not, they're only going to be like halfway because I forgot to render everything. <laughs> yeah, that's okay, Ben. I can thank all the people. We got our advisors, Omegas and our Theron. <laughs> our executive producers, Barbrandt, Scott M, Atomic, Mike G, Empty Drummer. <laughs> and our Chicago level people, Super Dust Out. <laughs> Sea Monsters, <laughs> Vera Tenuta, Justin, Frostclaw, Nubbin, Death Notes, too many for me <laughs> to name, <laughs> and lots of wonderful chairlings as well, <laughs> and so right. many beautiful people in chat. <laughs> hey, thanks for letting us do it the way we want to do it, and we'll be yeah. back next year, but I'll be back next week, hopefully sticking together uh, a PC for your amusement and, jo and enjoyment. You can backseat me hard. It'll oh, be a good time. Looking forward to a rectangle crashing the rectangle. to you <laughs> sometime we're gonna be, soon. We're going to be playing Track Mania on it at some point if it think goes Yes. Right. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Yay, Ben. <laughs>